Well, hello, and welcome back to the backlog, and welcome to Crimson Dawn. This is a survivor's like, so it's like vampire survivors, uh, but it's got its own twists. It's got its own uh, special little things that it throws into the mix to change things up. But it will feel very familiar if you've played vampire survivors. But we're going to do things a little bit differently. Usually we would have a chill playthrough. I'm going to do a bit more of a first impressions kind of thing as we show you some of the gameplay in the background. So let's get to it. So when you first load into the game, you are dropped into this city that has a portal that leads to various unhappy places, and you're given the option to unlock one of the three starting characters. Now, initially, there's only one level that's available, and it's the desert level. And your one character will go through and kill monsters and collect gems and level up as such. And it will all feel very much like Vampire Survivors in the best of ways. But one thing that separates the game from your normal Vampire Survivors clone is the fact that you can actually choose how far you are intending to go. Sort of a risk or reward system. You can select the first level where you only have to survive 150 seconds, or you can say, no, I'm going to survive 150 seconds, and then after that 150 seconds, I'm going to slay 400 monsters. And you will then get five times the loot that you've gathered unless you don't complete both of them and then you just get the loot you gathered, not the two per the two times that uh, you would have gotten for surviving 150 seconds if you'd just gone for that. Or you can say, no, I'm going to do the 150 seconds, the 400 monsters, and then after I've killed that 400 monsters, I'm going to go for 500 extra seconds and get 10 times the loot. Or just don't get any of those multipliers if you don't do all three of them all at once. Or you can say, I'm going to go all the way through and get, what is it, 25 times the loot that you would get. And this loot is useful because it not only allows you to unlock new characters, which cost about 250 coins each, but also once you've unlocked the blacksmith, it allows you to unlock levels in that weapon. So, for instance, the lightning level here. It's level one, you can unlock to add more damage to its level one, and a uh, less cooldown. And a quicker cooldown to its level one. And then when you upgrade it to a level two, you can add an extra cooldown, extra chain, another extra chain, and even more damage. So that as you upgrade it each run, it will become more powerful for each upgrade. And each one of these costs resources of a specific type. Eventually, as you progress through the level, the game will start spawning in larger enemies. These enemies, once killed, will drop chests. And those chests will allow you to either get new upgraded weapons, just an instant level up, or some um, interesting artifacts that you can't get any other way, like this cursed coin here with critical chance plus 20, but also movement speed minus 20. Or these ice boots that <laughs> leave a trail of ice that slows your enemies down. Or this pair of boots that allows you to go faster if there are too many enemies around you. Or just some resources that you can save for later. But these chests are the only way to get these artifacts. And some of them can be very powerful, like having the ability to occasionally allow your enemies to explode when you kill them, or occasionally allowing your enemies to be converted into a Reaper-type minion that will fight for you. Besides the usual level-up upgrades of upgrading your weapons, for instance, there are also a series of other level-up upgrades that allow you to upgrade your stats and abilities, like the Adrenaline Rush, that allows you to have a faster cooldown 
if you're closer to an enemy, or the Soul Reap, which will get your health back, occasionally, at least a little bit. Some of these, once they've been leveled up, are super powerful, like the Double Charts, which allows you to get your levels faster because it gives, at its base level, 10% chance that each shard you collect will provide you two shards instead of one, or five shards instead of two, or various upgrades like that, and they all stack making the next level up a 20% chance, or a 30% chance, <laughs> or even a 50% chance, all the way up to a 100% chance that each shard will provide you with double the shards. It even has some of the same abilities that you've Come to know and love in other survival-like games, like this one. Which sucks up all the things that you've dropped and haven't had the time to run around and pick up. And eventually you get to the end of the message, <laughs> and things just get a little bit crazy. And you die. And since I didn't finish killing the Mud Devil on the first level... I didn't get the bonuses. All of these would have been multiplied by 25, and I would have gotten everything, but I still get the things that I did pick up. Now, this game also has, once you've unlocked them, it also has two other modes currently, and they're still working on more levels, so let's dive into one of those. It has the Mystic Meadows, which not only has different enemies in it, and a, a, a different spawning a uh, system, a different spawning economy, if you will. But it also has these tiny little challenge pools here, where you've got to stay in them and slay a certain number of enemies while you're in them and it will slow you down or it will prevent you from using magic. You can only use physical attacks while you're in here. And it, though it doesn't, they are not required. You don't have to do these challenges while you're here. They do get you the chest at the center if you do complete them, which is just such a nice little bonus that I always go for them. I find this map to be my favorite of the three. Whereas the challenge is not necessarily in the enemies spawning themselves. The challenge is in completing all of the other challenges along the way. Surviving for 240 seconds and then clearing two of these madness zones, these little challenge areas, in 140 seconds. Which... It can be can be a little bit challenging, depending on the actual challenge that is in the zone, because it's randomized. Overall, I found the game to be a bit more challenging in the early stages, in the early few attempts, than Vampire Survivors. If only for its lack of variety, and it, it, it has a bit of a grind to be honest, at the beginning, because you have to unlock all of the things by completing various challenges and whatnot. That aren't necessarily there for vampire survivors and many of its clones. However, once you've... However, once you've gotten started, I find that it seems to flow fairly easy. Once I unlocked the second zone, which took me quite a few attempts to make it, I, I found that unlocking the third zone and unlocking all of the other characters came very easily and very quickly after that. So it does have a little bit of a curve, but once you get on top of things, it becomes a lot easier. And also, you can cheese this clear three madness zones a little bit by almost finishing a zone right before this one comes active.
then just quickly rushing to the second one to finish as soon as possible. But I found the game to be very fun, very enjoyable. If you like the Vampire Survivor formula, you will probably like this game as well. It isn't as polished because they haven't had enough time to polish it. It doesn't have as many options. It doesn't have as many weapons or as many unlockables. It doesn't have the really cool ability to max out two weapons and then join them together as one weapon, which I really miss. But for what it is, I would say Crimson Dawn is a good entry into the survivor-like genre. And maybe you should check it out. If this has been interesting to you, let me know in the comments below. And if you like this unscripted format, let me know that in the comments down below too. And as always, I'll play with you again next time.